Deathbringer here. Subscribe and hit the bell icon. Welcome to Dungeon Craft. Professor Dungeon Master here. The internet is currently on fire with accusations that Critical Role ripped off their new game, Candela Obscura, from Blades in the Dark. I kind of talked about this in my review for the game, which I'll put a link to that at the end of this video, but I guess not a lot of people saw that, so I'll address it here. Much of the controversy comes from these games having very similar mechanics. There are three core stats and then sub-skills within those stats, and you're rolling d6 in a dice pool system and trying to get a five or a six. The damage system is similar, it's not exactly the same, and the settings are similar with Blades in the Dark taking place in a Victorian steampunky fantasy kind of world, and Candela Obscura taking place in a uh, kind of Victorian steampunky fantasy world. As I pointed out in my recent review, the designers of Candela Obscura acknowledge the influence of Blades in the Dark. At least on their website, it didn't have that acknowledgement in the first PDF, and I think they've since corrected it. But in any event, it was on their website where they tipped the hat to the original designer, John Harper, who I'll point out has no problem with this because he, in turn, borrowed his ideas from the Powered by the Apocalypse system, which is you roll a bunch of d6s and you try to get a 6. I think there's two factors driving this misunderstanding, and the first is just plain jealousy. I think when you're on the top like Critical Role is, there's a certain number of people that are just going to want to take you down. They think you've had enough time in the spotlight. There are some people who are jealous of Matt Mercer because he's so good at what he does. Others who say he's not a real game master. It's a, a Hollywood show, and I think there is that kind of element that RPGs used to be a kind of a mom and pop field and now Hollywood is coming in and pitching a tent so to speak. But the other factor is just ignorance of the history of role-playing games and how they've developed and when I say that I'm not trying to be insulting it just strikes me that anyone who's about 25 years old now and, and a critical role fan they were born in 1998 or thereabouts, and they weren't there for the birth of role-playing games and the explosion of popularity in the 80s, so they weren't there to see how these games influenced one another and designers shared ideas. If you're interested in that kind of thing, it's all in this book, The Elusive Shift by John Peterson, who also wrote Playing at the World. And this book is about the development of role-playing games into a new art form and Everyone trying to decide exactly what is it and what should it be called. So Dungeons and Dragons arose from wargamer culture and cons back in the 1960s and 70s. And a convention at the time would only have maybe a couple hundred people at it. And it was common for people to invent their own rules, sell them in little pamphlets, and take rules, borrow mechanics from one another. And what you would do is you would simply acknowledge them. And nobody expected to get rich off this thing, so it was just the polite kind of thing to do as part of the culture. Gary Gygax wrote a supplement called Chainmail, which was used by Dave Arneson in his Twin Cities Blackmore campaign. Arneson's innovation was to have a campaign where the players didn't play troops with units, they were individual characters. And Arneson wrote Gygax and said, you know, I've got this, this variant of Chainmail that's super popular and I want to come down and demonstrate it for you. So he did. He took the ride to Lake Geneva. And when Gygax saw this, he realized, wait a second, we've created an entirely new game here. And Gygax and Arneson published Dungeons & Dragons with both of them being the authors. And then the game exploded, selling millions of copies. And then Gygax kind of changed his tune from, well, there's a lot of different ways you could play Dungeons and Dragons too. There is only one way. It's the official Dungeons and Dragons TSR way. And that kind of made him a lot of enemies in game design circles because it was really antithetical to the culture of barring ideas that had been established. Now, I'm not going to judge the guy because millions of dollars were on their line. And it's, you know, when money and morals intersect, sometimes you get some um, interesting cognitive dissonance. And eventually, Gygax was fired from TSR and he changed his tune once again, became much more inclusive and accepting of other game systems. But back in the 80s, there was not just Dungeons and Dragons. In the early 80s, there was an explosion of game systems. You had Tunnels and Trolls and RuneQuest and Call of Cthulhu and and that led to other horror games like Chill and you had superhero games 
like Champions, and that led to official superhero games like Marvel Heroes and DC Heroes. Traveler gave way to Star Trek, and that gave way to Star Frontiers. There was Top Secret, and then James Bond 007 role-playing. Today, I think independent games are still very popular, but what's happened is Dungeons & Dragons is like a hundred times more popular, so it's very difficult for those independent games to get any kind of room to breathe. So when Critical Role said, we're introducing a new role-playing game, Candela Obscura, the world was watching because for much of the mainstream world, Dungeons and Dragons is all they've known up until now. And when Candela was released and it looked similar to another game, well, that led to accusations of plagiarism. Now, Matt looks like a very young guy, but he was definitely around for the introduction of second edition. He's a second edition guy, and he remembers the 80s when different games borrowed from different games, and that was just part of the culture, and that's what he's doing. Even John Harper himself, the author of Blades in the Dark, acknowledges that he got many of his ideas from the, I was going to say Apocalypse Now, he got them from powered by the apocalypse. The etiquette is you just tip your hat to the other designer and you say, look, I borrowed this thing and we're making something new and everyone is copacetic with it. I myself borrowed ideas from DM Scotty's Luck Dice for my game Deathbringer and I acknowledge Arneson, Gygax, uh, Tracy Hickman and DM Scotty with the influence they had on my game. I was recently contacted on Twitter by Indestructo Boy, who said one of my videos influenced his game, Vagabond, and he said, I hope I didn't mind, but he was taking this idea, and I said, sure, there's no problem, you know, you, you take it. It's Game mechanics can't be copyrighted, right? We share them with one another. The Supreme Court of the United States has ruled game mechanics cannot be copyrighted. So if you put a game out there and you make it public, you can copyright names and trademark names and of places of monsters so something like mind flayer could be trademarked but you can't copyright strength dexterity wisdom hit points armor class those things are part of the public domain and anyone can use them the same way any musicians that play rock and roll can use the same chords and chord progressions that other musicians who've gone before have used. So moving forward, in the light of the OGL scandal, I hope that designers can work together in a collaborative way, that we can return to the roots of the hobbies back in the 60s and 70s, where you freely gave your ideas away so that people could do new innovative things with them. In the words of the Red Hot Chili Peppers, we need to give it away, give it away, give it away now. At least that's what I think. What do you think? I'd love for you to opine in the comments below. Also below, you'll find links to my own game, Deathbringer, as well as my Patreon, where you can support my work. And speaking of Deathbringer, he doesn't have a joke at the end of this video, but you can watch him sing about some real scandals right over here. Until the next time, may all your rolls be 20s.